Welcome to the Non-Programmers Python Tutorial. This is a screencast series for Python version 2.6. You should know how to edit programs in a text editor or idle, save the file and run the file once the files have been saved to your disk. Programming tutorials since the beginning of time have started with a little program called Hello. World. The syntax changed in Python 3.0. If you are using Python 3.0, you should be reading non programmers' tutorial for Python 3 instead. So here is the Python 2.6 example print hello world. If you are using the command line to run programs, then type it in with a text editor. Save it as hello.py and run it with python hello.py. When this program is run here's what it prints. Now I'm not going to tell you this every time, but when I show you a program I recommend that you type it in and run it. You are more likely to learn it better and retain the information when you manually type it in. Copying and pasting will not do. Now here is a more complicated program. When you run this program it prints out what you see here. When the computer runs this program it first sees the line, then the second, third and so on. The computer keeps looking at each line, follows the command and then goes on to the next line. The computer keeps running commands until it reaches the end of the program. Now is probably a good time to give you a bit of an explanation of what is happening, and a little bit of programming terminology. What we were doing was using a command called print. The print command is followed by one or more arguments. So in this example, print hello world. There is one argument which is hello, world. Note that this argument is a group of characters enclosed in double quotes. This is commonly referred to as a string of characters, or string, for short. Another example of a string is Jack and Jill went up a hill. A command and its arguments are collectively referred to as a statement. So, print hello world is an example of a statement. That's probably more than enough terminology for now. Here is another program. And here is the output when the program is run. In this example, the print command is followed by two arguments, with each of the arguments separated by a comma. So with the first line of the program, the first argument is the string 2 plus 2 is and the second argument is the mathematical expression 2 plus 2, which is commonly referred to as an expression. What is important to note is that a string is printed as is, the string is what is within the double quotes but doesn't include the double quotes themselves. So the string is printed without the enclosing double quotes, but an expression is evaluated, in other words, converted, to its actual value. Python has six basic operations for numbers, exponentation, multiplication division, remainder or modulo, addition, and subtraction. The symbol we use for exponentation is two asterisks. For example 5 is raised to a power of 2 which is equal to 25. The symbol for multiplication is a single asterisk. An example of its use is to multiply 2 by 3 which gives you 6. Division is done by using the forward slash key on your keyboard. For example, 14 divided by 3 gives you 4. Modulus is used to find the remainder between two numbers by using the percentage key. An example is 14 mod 3 which gives 2 since 2 would be the remainder that is left if you divided 14 by 3. Addition is done by using the plus sign. For example, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. And subtraction is done by using the minus key. For example, 4 minus 3 gives you 1. Note that when you are dividing or trying to find the remainder of decimal numbers, the results you get will be decimal. If you did not divide or try to find the remainder of a decimal number then the result you get will not be a decimal number. To illustrate this, 
I will open my text editor and calculate some numbers to show you how Python handles decimals. As you can see, Python gives different answers for some problems depending on whether or not decimal numbers are used. The order of operations is the same as in mathematics. You have parentheses first which represent brackets, then exponents, then multiplication, then division and modulus or remainder, then addition and finally subtraction. Your math teacher probably calls this bodmas, pemdads, or something similar. If you're not sure, please revise it. Now another important thing is documenting your code. Often in programming you are doing something complicated and mean not in the future remember what you did. When this happens, the program should probably have comments to explain how it works. A comment is a simple note to you and other programmers explaining what is happening in the program. We use the hashtag character starter line for commenting and type whatever it is after it in the line. Note that the computer ignores comments while running the program because you do not want comments to show. It should show only in the actual script you have written or source file. And that concludes the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching.